and HQ Tiffany said, what do you need us to do? This is going to sound a little crazy, I said, but these helmets let you talk to animals. See where Tiffany looked at us like we were bonkers. The horse and poodles are already helping us, Kenny explained. So if you can talk to the macaws and goats and the pigs, it might be able to stop the robotics animals from poking over the creek. You have to set the languages to whichever animal you're talking to. Ah, okay, said Sarah and Tiffany, grabbed the helmets and I went back to the horses and the poodles. Kenny stood on a large mat underneath the tar tees bars. Let's do this, he yelled. The poodles all stood up on two legs and grabbed hold of the mat and launched Kenny in the air. He saw a bite and landed on the back of the flying hippo. The hippo was not happy about Kenny being on his back and was bucking him off. <coughs> Somehow, Kenny managed to hold on the top of the hippo, sweeping over the crowd. Then it was my turn. The flying... As the flying wood dog sword pulled me, I called out, Giddy up! The two horses flicked me high into the air. Uh oh. I landed on top of the warthog. The mechanic animals tried to throw us off, but Kenny and both hold on tight. This isn't fun, I thought it would be, Kenny yelled. You thought riding on angry flying hippos would be fun, I shouted back. We were trying to steer the animals to the ground, but they weren't obeying. Come on, Mr. Hippo. Time for West Kenny, sir. The flying hippo bucked him so hard that he was dropped to the ground. Dr. Kane laughed. Ah, H do more like H dud. Things weren't going well. Luckily, we still had Sarah, Tiffany and the animal army to help us convince the goats to form primitive in the middle of the stage of the plenty of posty sites. Two macaws flew over the top of the Great Pyramid and called out the hippo. Oh, hippo! Oi, hippo! You want a piece of me? Yeah, come on, big boy, bring it. The second macaw shimmed, shimmed in. On which command, Dr. Kennedy? Yeah. Crush them! They were not and flew straight towards the Great Pyramid. I know, it was going to crash into our new friends. But then all of a sudden the goats pretended to fight. The only then I realised that they had been standing right in front of the wheel of steel. Then Kenny jumped in front of the hippo just before it flew inside. Sarah quickly slammed the door and locking the giant hippos inside. The flying hippo rammed into the sides of the wheel of steel trying to escape. But it was no use, the steel cage was too strong. Eventually the robot hero ran out power and lay, lay down. Dr. Kane was fun. Me. You'll pay for the, that ninja kid and hate you. Then he turned the widow and the flying water. Attack! The robotic animal started to dive towards the ground. Ah! The Wolverson started to drive towards the ground. I looked down and saw the ping pong pigs playing. Pigs had pulled the huddle with their ping pong paddles raced in combat. As we flew past the turn peas, I leapt and off the witch to grab it. I missed. Bing and Zing were there to catch me. As the warthog flew towards them, Tiffany and the pig started throwing hula hoops after hula hoops. Fling, fling, fling. The warthog trashed and bashed trying to break through the hula hoops, but there were too many of them. It thumped to the ground and eventually went out power too. My beautiful beads, Dr. Kane yelled, destroyed. He turned to the bolt below the rhino widow, the biggest and the strongest of the mechanic creatures. Finish them! Chapter 8. We don't want to slaughter the food towards the roof. As I first thought she was making an escape, but then she turned. Uh oh. The cave is spinning to wait for us. The horses and pig bolted out of the way, and the goats fade to for real this time. We were about to be crunched, and I had to think quickly. Next was the giant poles. They popped around the big top, and I'll give you the single over one. Behind the pole and the others. We all jumped behind the pole just a second before the wine crashed into it. Smash! The whole big top shot. The widow the wine barely flinched. Nice try, Dr. Hound, but the body's made out of titanium. A little pole can't hurt it, but the collision did break off a part of widow's horn. I expect to see lots I expect to see lots of wine inside by a road but had head inside. There was a chipmunk there was a chipmunk sitting inside. This the same chipmunk Kenny had zapped with the switch room machine and I like Zap, zap. This doesn't make sense, Kenny said. I thought their brains were switched. I know, I replied. 
I will apply it. If Dom Pahan is back to normal, how can the chip might still be smart enough to control a mechanic animal? You have a sidekick in the kid, so I decided to keep the little guy's mind. Dr. Kane blowed his Einstein the chipmunk by made him smarter than any human being. That's why, dum dums, my intelligence is extraordinary. Einstein laughed. It will be fun and your kid and hate you now for the time for the clowns to make a final bow. He cranked up the speed to steering white and towards us. There was no way we could outplay a robot bino, and no way we could outsmart Einstein. But then I had one last idea. Music, I shouted. Everyone hip hop hop music. So I played for Dr. Kane's hat, and it was whamming into the thing, and immediately landed on the ground to start break dancing. Dr. Kane was furious. Music off, music off, he shouted at his hat. The music stopped, but we kept dancing. She was busting some moves. No, 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 Dr. Hound bellowed. Einstein, what are you doing? Einstein took his head out of the thing. Wow, no, I can't control it anymore. It's like Wizard has a mind of her own. But that's ridiculous, Dr. Kane said. She, he's a robot. But Einstein had bigger things to worry about. Wither was failing to the world. Wither, no. Abandoned mission, Dr. Kane cried out. Agree, Einstein said. He disappeared through the window through a suitcase, a miniature, miniature helicopter flew out the windows behind. A long ladder dropped from down from the minicopter and Dr. Kane climbed into it somehow. The tiny lift Dr. Kane to the ground and headed towards the broken roof. I'll get you next, I need you kid, Dr. Kane called down to us. I'll get you even worse, Einstein added. Then they both flew through the hole of the big top. Side of still left in the crowd loud with boss. Kenny called out, can we also get a big round of applause for awesome f- animal friends that are performing doodles and cheeky macaws and singing horses and ping pong pigs and amazing faint thing go- goats? All the mammal- animals came out and took take a bow. Everyone was taking photos of the animals. Kenny and I snuck into the bathroom and changed back to the time tower. Tiffany again, the animals left the stage and the wing muscles sweeping up. Woo woo, bing, you missed everything, Tiffany added. Um, there was a huge queue for the toilets, I said. It looked like somebody tamed those nasty robotic animals while we were gone, Kenny added. It was an educated and hatred, Kenny said. They were amazing. You missed them every time, Sarah so said. Shame, said Kenny. They sounded really cool. Hey, dude is the best, Tiffany said. But I'm um, starting a juggling ball into Kenny's mouth. He wouldn't have built the identity. But Sarah and Tiffany thought that he missed everything. They told us about it every second of the action at the bus ride home. Chapter 9. Then we'll finish. That night, we told Mum we're going to all about the crazy old circus day. We would have been in big trouble without the animal translation helmets. Kenny said, you knew we needed it, didn't you, Grandma? I asked. Your dad and your uncle have always loved animals in the circus, Grandma said. Grandma said, it was a tragedy your uncle always you turned into hate. Do you think we'll see that again? I wish I knew, Grandma replied. I hope so, Mum, but we do know that. So proud of you, boys. We had it not just for saving the day, but for putting a one show in the Kane family circus. That's to the end. Bye. Thank you for listening to these to episode fourteen. See you in episode fifteen of season two. Bye bye.